there are only a tiny number of scientists who still question a human influence on climate. And yet, climate scepticism hasn't gone away. You'll still see websites claiming that the Earth isn't warming up, that it's all down to the urban heat island. But that's not true. You'll still hear claims that there's proof that the Earth was hotter during the medieval warm period. But that's not true. And you'll still hear people claiming that the sun somehow disproves global warming. But that's not true either. So why is this stuff still around? The problem is, there are a lot of people who don't want global warming to be true. The fact is, I'm one of them. I wish there was no such thing as global warming. Because taking action to prevent climate change is going to affect all our lives and mean giving up some of our freedom. Freedom to go anywhere, do anything. To consume whatever you want, when you want. The freedom to have an open road and a car full of cheap petrol. Don't tell me not to fly, I've simply got to. It's, it's not only my freedom that's threatened. Cutting back on greenhouse gases threatens the freedom of companies to go about their business. Don't tell me not to live just not surprisingly, they wanted to fight their case. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? A new alliance was formed. It was a who's who of household names. Exxon, BP, General Motors, Shell, Ford and many others. They called themselves the Global Climate Coalition. Throughout the 90s, the Global Climate Coalition embarked on a marketing campaign to convince the public there was no need to take action. What do you know about the United Nations proposed climate treaty? Isn't that about uh, global warming? It would force the U.S. to cut energy use by over 20 percent. Gasoline prices could go up by 50 cents a gallon. Heating and electricity prices could soar. And higher energy costs will raise the price of almost everything we buy. Industry was fighting back. A key part of their strategy was to highlight doubts about the science. They used the media and the internet to promote the views of the minority of scientists who were skeptical. And the campaign received a huge boost with the election of Republican President George W. Bush. I've got a question about global warming. I, I suppose I want to know what is your plan? Good. Um, we, uh, first of all, I, there is uh, the, uh, the globe is warming. The fundamental debate is it man made or natural? Bush's views on climate change were no secret. But what was a secret was a strategy the Republicans used to get the American public on their side. That is, until a revealing document came to light in 2003. Frank Luntz was a pollster and political advisor with an impressive reputation. My name is Frank Luntz, and you've been invited to participate in a people meter session. He'd been hired to help Bush get re-elected. When an internal campaign memo he wrote in 2002 was leaked, it revealed that it was the issue of the environment on which Republicans felt most vulnerable. Well, this is it. This is the memo. And um, it's basically a policy document about how Republican politicians should address questions about the environment, about global warming. And there's a few really interesting points on this. It says... The scientific debate is closing against us, but not yet closed. There is still a window of opportunity to challenge the science. To me, this says, look, we know we're on the losing side now. We know the science is starting to close in on us. But there's still a window of opportunity to get our point across, not to say, all right, guys, 
we accept that global warming is a good chance that global warming is happening. We're going to change our mind. We're going to change our approach. No. I mean, look at that raw cynicism. Now, this is interesting. The scientific debate remains open. Should the public come to believe that the scientific issues are settled, the views about global warming should change accordingly. Therefore, and this is in bold, you need to continue to make the lack of scientific certainty a primary issue in the debate. What that's saying is you just need to keep stirring it. Wherever there's kind of uncertainty or discord among the science, you just bring that out. It's not about trying to resolve the science to make the science better. It's to try and, you know, sow the seeds of discontent. There's another one here that kind of reveals the strategy. Act only with all the facts in hand. In other words, if you think that the, if you create that element of scientific uncertainty and you say we can only act with all the facts in hand, that is a recipe for inaction. Because science has never got all the facts in hand. It's always looking for more information. This really has got nothing to do with science. This is about how to kind of skirt around the issues. It's very clever. I have to give it that. There's bits where you just go, of course, that's a very clever way to do it. But it's, it's just depressing. We should be trying to find the truth. It's pretty obvious that the aim of all this is to avoid taking action on climate change. As long as the public believe that scientists disagree on the issue, they won't demand action. But as the scientific evidence has accumulated in favour of global warming, it's become harder and harder to claim that there's any real scientific disagreement on the core issues. The science that said the world is warming and the world is warming as a result of human activities is beyond any reasonable doubt. 